St. Mary's College in Moraga, California. It's here on C-SPAN. A little bit more about the candidates. A poll show a Senator Boxer, a three-term Democrat, narrowly leading her Republican challenger. Uh, Senator Boxer won a relatively close Senate race in 1992 and 1998. between the Democratic incumbent, Senator Barbara Boxer, and her Republican challenger, Carly Fiorina. Good evening. I'm Randy Shandabel, the political editor for KTVU Television. Before welcoming the candidates, let me introduce you to the journalist who will be asking tonight's questions. Carla Marinucci is the San Francisco Chronicle's senior political reporter. Scott Schaefer is the host of KQED Public Radio's The California Report. And Pilar Marrero is the senior political reporter for La Opinion. We'll also be taking some questions from KTVU viewers. Now, now, it, now it's time to introduce the candidates. Please welcome Senator Barbara Boxer and Carly Fiorina. Democrat Barbara Boxer is a three-term United States Senator. She's served in the Senate since 1993. Before that, she served in the House of Representatives for 10 years. Republican Carly Fiorina is running for elected office for the first time. Her background is in business. Fiorina served for six years as the chief executive officer of Hewlett Packard. Thank you both for joining us tonight. So let's get started. Now, before tonight's debate, your campaigns participated in a coin toss to see who would get to answer first on the opening, uh, the opening remarks. Senator, you won, but chose to let Carly Fiorina go first. So, Ms. Fiorina, you have 90 seconds. Thank you so much, and please call me Carly. It's great to be with all of you here, and thank you for letting us into your homes this evening. You know, I have lived the American dream. I started out, like most Americans do, in a small business. I typed, I filed, I answered the phones for a little nine-person company about an hour from where we are tonight. My husband started out driving a tow truck for the city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I am running for public office now because I, like so many of you, think our country is headed in the wrong direction. And I think the American dream is too hard for too many people. Frank and I are worried that our two granddaughters won't have the same opportunities that we've had. I've never run for public office before, but I think our founding fathers intended ours to be a citizen government. I think it's what of, by, and for the people means. I have created jobs. I have cut spending. I have solved problems. And I think we need some common sense and some practical problem-solving ability in Washington, D.C. Barbara Boxer has been in Washington, D.C. for 28 long years, and though she may say many things tonight, her track record, her long track record in Washington, D.C., is consistent and clear, and the results of her policies are devastating for this state. In the last 20 months alone, our unemployment rate has grown from 10.2 percent to 12.3 percent. Our debt has grown from 10.8 trillion to 13 trillion on its way to 20 trillion. Barbara Boxer may say she is fighting for Californians, but the truth is she is fighting hardest for another six years in Washington, D.C. Thank you. Senator Boxer, you get 90 seconds now. Thank you very much, everybody. It's wonderful to be here. Thanks to the sponsors. Thanks to the good people of California who have put their faith in me. And because of that, I've been able to enact a thousand provisions for our children, the first ever after school program, for our veterans, the first ever comprehensive casualty care center in California for our wounded warriors. We've doubled the transportation funding. That means thousands of jobs, and jobs are my focus. Uh, that's why I'm working to make California the hub of the new clean energy economy. That's why I'm working to make sure a small business gets access to credit. And that's why I'm working to stop tax breaks to companies who ship overseas, jobs overseas. And when I talk about shipping jobs overseas, I'm reminded of my opponent. When she was CEO of Hewlett Packard, before she was terminated, actually, she shipped 30,000 jobs overseas. Think of it. That's the size of Foster City. And through all that pain, what did she do to show any sacrifice? She took $100 million. 
So that reminds me of Wall Street. That's what happened on Wall Street. Bonuses at the top, paying for everybody else. I want to see the words made in America again, and I ask for your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Now to the questions, but first, a few guidelines. You'll both get up to 90 seconds to answer a question. The other candidate will have up to 60 seconds for a rebuttal. One note, we've got lots of questions tonight, so I'm sure our audience at home would, uh, would appreciate brief, concise answers. So if it's possible to answer a question under 90 seconds, I'm sure no one would complain. <laughs> so, Carla, you have the first question. Great. Ms. Fiorina, let's get to the economy. Uh, you supported tax cuts for business and for the wealthiest Americans because they, quote, pay for themselves by creating jobs. But you've opposed two recent jobs bills, one a teacher's jobs bill, which, which would bring 16,000 jobs to California, the other a small business jobs bill, which is actually supported by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. So how do you justify immediate help for the wealthiest Americans, but not for average Californians who might be out of a job and listening to this debate tonight? You know, I think first we need to start by describing what the 2001-2003 tax cuts really were, tax cuts that are going to expire in January. The vast majority of that tax relief went to middle-class Americans. And in fact, if those tax cuts are not extended, the average California family will pay up to $1,600 more in taxes. Um, it's also true that small business owners in particular are struggling under the weight of businesses Senator Boxer has voted against small business tax relief each and every time. The death tax will skyrocket to 55 percent on January 1st. We have 88,000 farms in this great state, most of them family owned. To create jobs, we need to make sure that in particular our small businesses, our family owned businesses, our innovators and our entrepreneurs are freed from strangling regulation and freed from taxation. I think in the middle of a terrible recession, this is the worst economic crisis since 1979 and since 1929 in this state. Just think about it. We have 12 metropolitan areas with unemployment above 15 percent. We have 23 counties with unemployment above 15 percent. And meanwhile, in the last 20 months, the federal government spending has increased 10 percent each year, and federal government employees have increased 14 and a half percent over the last two years. Senator Boxer, you have 60 seconds to reply. I'd like to go back to the question, because it's very important. We had 16,500 teachers plus get pink slips in the mail. They were going to not be in the classroom when our children are there. What's more important than our children? You know, I'm a product of public schools. 95% of our people go to public schools. The kids go to public schools. This was a bill that was paid for. Do you know that my opponent actually called that bill where we saved these teacher jobs? She called the bill a disgrace. She called it disgraceful. Now, I'll tell you why I don't think she likes it, because we paid for that bill. It was deficit neutral because we paid for it by stopping some tax breaks for companies who ship jobs overseas. So every time you really get past the surface, you see my opponent fighting for the billionaires, for the millionaires, for the companies who ship jobs overseas. She even opposes the small business legislation that most everybody supports, that we give tax breaks to small business. Thank you, Senator. Scott, you have the next question, and it's for Senator Boxer. Thank you. Senator Boxer, last night, President Obama officially ended the U.S. combat mission in Iraq. During the course of that war, more than 4,400 uh, Americans died, and tens of thousands more came home with physical and mental disabilities. My question is, do you think the war was worth the cost? Mm -hmm. And going forward in Afghanistan, what criteria will you use to say enough is enough, it's time to bring our troops home? Well, I'm very happy that our combat troops are coming back from Iraq. I was one of about 23 that did not vote for that war. Uh, I did, in fact, support the troops. I voted for 85 uh, percent of all the spending bills that we had, even though I had disagreements on that war. And when I opposed any of those bills, it was because it wasn't good enough 
for our wounded warriors. So I'm so glad that they're coming back. And I think the reason that we are at this point is because America finally said, through our president, this is a date, we're coming home, say to the Iraqis, you have to step up to the plate and defend your own nation. I believe in nation helping, not nation building. And I feel the same way in Afghanistan. I did vote to go after Osama bin Laden. And George W. Bush turned away from it and went into Iraq. And I do support the president trying to see that we can train the Afghan people to, again, defend themselves. But I do want to see more timelines drawn there. I think it's important to send that signal. This is a time frame. I'm on a Feingold bill, which you can read, which essentially says, give us a timetable. Give us the conditions in which we can bring our troops home. And I think we're on that track. I support beginning the withdrawal by 2011. But I'm happy that our troops are coming home. They are the bravest. They are the greatest. And now we have to take care of them. They have some terrible injuries and wounds. I just went to that comprehensive casualty care center, and they're doing Senator miraculous Rose, I'm sorry, things time's there. Up. Thank uh, you. Apparently the lights aren't working. But a oh. real a real quick follow before we go to your to your answer. Sure. If the president doesn't come up with a written timeline as you've suggested he do, will you call him out on that as you as you did President Bush? You were very critical of President Bush for not mm -hmm. having firm timelines. You haven't been as critical of President Obama. Well, actually, I've already stated it publicly and I'm on the Feingo bill, which would require the president to do that. Because I don't think this is a matter of partisanship. It's a matter of our troops. It's a matter of we need to rebuild America. Okay. We're at a tough time. And so I think we can help Afghanistan and help Iraq, but we need to rebuild our country. Okay. Ms. Fiorina, your reply? You know, Senator Boxer's last two answers are a perfect illustration of her rhetoric versus the reality. So let's look at the reality of her record supporting our men and women in uniform. She voted against body armor. She voted against support for brain trauma and post-traumatic stress syndrome. She voted against extended family leave for their families. And in fact, the vote that she cast so upset then Senator Joe Biden that he said, this is a political vote, nothing is worth in that case, his son's life. And as regards to the two bills that she talked about earlier, the truth is the small business bill that she supported could have been a great bill. But they threw in there TARP Jr., the opportunity for the federal government to take equity positions in community banks. We all know how well that worked out with TARP Sr. It didn't work so well. It didn't get credit flowing again. And as for the teacher's bill, we are playing political football with taxpayer money. In fact, Sacramento and Washington, D.C. have been fighting over who gets to spend that money and the vast majority of teachers won't be employed until 2012 and some of it may just go to reducing the deficit. Uh, time is up. Pilar, you have an, uh, the next question and it's for Carly Fiorina. Yes, thank you very much. Ms. Fiorina, every year 65,000 young men and women graduate from high school in the U.S. and have a hard time furthering their education or even finding a job because they were brought here illegally when they were children. Uh, they are undocumented through no fault of their own. Will you have them continue to live in this limbo? Uh, would you send them all back to countries they don't remember, they don't really know? Or would you consider supporting legislation that helps them in the long path to citizenship if they study, if they meet certain goals? You know, I believe that the 21st century is the century of brain power and innovation. And we need to cultivate all the brain power we can by making sure that people are well educated here, yes, I would support the DREAM Act because I do not believe that we can punish children who through no fault of their own are here trying to live the American dream. Now let me very quickly say, I do not support amnesty for those who have come here illegally. I believe the federal government must secure the border and it has not done its job. I believe as well that the federal government has to come up with a guest worker program that works. Senator Boxer has vilified the people of Arizona, even though the federal government isn't doing its job. And at a critical moment in 2007, when a guest worker program was on the table, she was the deciding vote that killed the guest worker program and, in essence, destroyed a compromise on comprehensive immigration reform. And when she 
voted for the Dorgan Amendment, which killed that guest worker program. Her comment was that immigrants represent a cheap source of labor that threatens the American worker. You see, if you look at Senator Boxer's long track record,